Welcome to today's weekend fly time stream. Uh, hope everybody had a good week. I had a good week. I was on spring break. Uh, you might have been able to see that. Um, moving my trash can. Uh, you're, hopefully, you're able to see that I was. I streamed a couple times over the week. Had a good time. Just chilling out, relaxing. Um, yeah. So, hope everybody is doing well, despite how uh, things seem to be going in the world. Um, today, we're going to be finishing the baker that we started on Thursday, I think. And uh, we're going to be putting the wing on it. And then um, we might even do the wing on the butcher. I was able to find the feather that I was looking for. And um, we might do the wing on the butcher as well. So then we'll have the butcher baker. And then we'll just need to do the candlestick maker um, for the three men in a tub. Nursery rhyme trio. Um, now, as you can see uh, on the fly, I have switched... Already switched my thread to black uh, as normal. Um, now I'm just picking, I picked out a couple of golden pheasant tippets for the uh, underwing. Um, so yeah, so on Thursday, had a little bit of, um, trouble with the internet. Uh, we had a, a sh kind of short power outage here, and so our, 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 my internet went down while the power was out. The only thing that, um, didn't make it into the actual stream was that I just tied in the, the throat here, um, just a light blue hackle. So yeah, uh, the internet went down, the stream cut, nobody missed very much. Um, now I'm just got a pair of uh, um, golden pheasant tippets and I'm just giving them a little bit of a flatten right at the tie in point like I normally do with my smooth jawed players. Then, as normal, um, I'm going to give them a slate twist at, right at the high end point. So, you give them that slate twist at the tie end point because you're tying something flat onto something round. When you do that, the tendency is for the wings to want to. Um, you know, follow the curve of the body and splay outwards, and we don't want that. So we want everything. We want these to 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 butt uh, flat up against each other, back to back. Um, so should be good. Tie these right in on top. Pretty good. There are other things that go on tops here, so terribly concerned. Now we're gonna do this kind of in a a mixed wing style. One is just a little bit less 
straight together. So we're going to fix that. A little extra, a little extra crimp. There we go, that's pretty straight. Let's go and trim the buttons at an, at an angle. Then we're going to fully bind those down because we don't want this to move at all. We also want there to be a nice smooth base for the wing. Now we are gonna do this in a little bit of a mixed wing, so how smooth that base is is not as important as if I were tying in a built wing. Um, but you know, it's always just nice to have a, a good foundation for a wing. Um, uh, and the reason why we're going, going to do this as a mixed wing and not a built wing is because the recipe specifically uh, calls for sprigs. Um, so we're going to tie everything in as a sprig. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, basically just cut a bunch of kind of thinner um, pieces of each um, uh, each material, uh, and we're just gonna bundle them up. We're gonna put one bundle on each side of the underwing, and tie it all in, and uh, that's um, and that'll be our wing, and uh, and that'll be the fly, because this is a really this fly has a pretty straightforward and simple wing. Um, so with that calls for sprigs of golden pheasant. Um, golden pheasant, we're gonna use am gold because uh, that's what I got on hand. And although I have perhaps some nicer golden pheasant, um, we're gonna save that for kind of flies that need it. So golden pheasant, it calls for bustard which is quarry buster. Now we are counting fibers, but mostly just to make sure that the wings are, are balanced when they go on the fly. And when we're putting materials together, I'm just laying them out in front of me, right here on the desk in front of me. <clears throat> and I'm just piling piling them up, making sure that they're in the correct orientation. So like lefts go with lefts and rights go with rights. But I'm not too worried about, you know, whether they're stacked, you know, in an order. Um, I'm going to use the same order for each bundle, but it's not going to be like organized. It's not going to be like, you know, red, green, blue, you know, top to bottom. It might be red blue, yellow, green on one side, and blue, green, yellow, red on the other side. I mean, I don't, I'm not that picky. Some people are. Um, and if you are fairly picky about what order your components appear in your mixed wing, then I would suggest actually uh, marrying your wing together first and then picking it apart once it's on the fly. That's a really, uh, really nice way to do it. Um, now for this fly, for the particulars of this fly, or this wing, I'm doing four fibers of golden pheasant tail, and then three, pretty much three fibers of everything else. Um, and as normal, the recipe is in the description of this video. Um, stand stuff. So I'm just going to produce basically two bundles of uh, fibers that all point in the same direction. And so again, lefts go with lefts, rights go with rights. Um, and then I'll just kind of stack them up and time on. 
And we'll tie on both, probably both bundles at the same time. That's a little bit more convenient. So that's all the components of one bundle, one side, one wing. And just going to grab them all and show you. So here, um, I might just kind of pull different components in, in different ways just to make sure that they're all approximately the same length or you know, or are of an appropriate length that they look okay. Um, don't want anything to just stick out, but and then it'll just go on the side. And it'll be the wing. So that was one wing. We'll do the other, and we'll tie them on uh, as normal. I think we'll do that. Uh, we might have to tie if the bundle gets if the if these bundles get large enough we might have to tie them on individually and that's um that's okay And again, it does say swan, but I am using dyed turkey because I, I, I don't have all these colors in dyed swan. So basically, just using what I what I've got. Um, you know, in in the in the good old days, it was. Uh, it, in the at the time when these patterns were written down, a lot of the patterns didn't even include material lists. So they just said, you know, a wing with yellow, blue, and green in it, and and that's because you know um, a lot of times they didn't really care what material they used. So uh, and and use the use of subs subs you know um, substitutes uh, is fairly common. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, a, a fly dresser today or a fly tire today. Tying a fly and substituting, um, you know, instead of using, say, uh, muskrat fur that's called for in like an Adams or a, like a Cahill pattern. And instead, using um, uh, like one of the hair, like the hairline synthetics. That's kind of what it's like. Or you know, using gray squirrel instead of of, of, um, of muskrat. So you know. Um,
yeah, so the use of sub subs, uh, as we would think of it today, it was not uncommon. And, and again, a lot of the patterns simply specified color and not material. <laughs> Dropping things. So, so now we have the second bundle. Just gonna make sure that all of the slips are facing the right direction. And are of a similar length. I'm going to. So this is the second bundle. I just want to tweak its composition just a little bit because quite. Some things are a little bit longer. Some things are a little bit shorter. I just want to make sure everything is kind of in the neighborhood, the same length, and oriented in the same direction. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie these um, one at a time because these bundles ended up a little bit thicker. I'm going to tie the far one on first. Good number of turns just to hold it on. Like I said, it's a relatively thick one. Then we're going to tie the near one on. I think I might want the links just to go a little bit longer. I'm going to be tied on just a little bit shorter. And I think I've got a little bit of extra space. Some of these materials, like the peacock wing, are, are, are a little bit short. And so I wasn't sure if I could tie them on long enough, but I think I can. So I'm just going to tie that on a little bit longer. just to give it a little bit more. All right, that's good. I like that. So then I'm going to turn and trim. You want to trim? Generally, you want to trim your wings uh, in small batches, like small bunches, just because if you try and trim everything all at once, you have, you're have you definitely in danger of shifting a wing um, while you're trimming, because that, you know, the, the leverage of the, the, the scissors and can move the wing around a little bit. And that can be, Change your wing. All right, so I'm going to a couple wraps and wax our thread. Wax our thread well. Just want to trim a few of the buttons here a little bit more. Just gonna can rock your wing back and forth like this just to make sure it's up on the top of the, the shank. And tie it down, wax thread, not going anywhere. 
that's a nice, nice colorful mixed wing. Super easy. Um, again, you just want to make sure that none of your, none of the slips that you cut get rotated. So like if they get twisted and they get tied so that the their inside is, or the, um, I guess the, the, um, the dull side of the feather gets tied out, um, then that can be not so pretty and also can cause the wing to curve in the wrong direction. Um, and what I mean by uh, dull side is every side of the feather, every feather has a has an up, has an outside and inside. The outside is the side of the feather that was facing towards, you know, the environment. Um, it was on the outside of the bird. Uh, and then there's the side of the feather that pointed in towards the bird, was towards the body of the bird. Um, and usually that side is a little bit duller um, and not quite as, you know, richly colored. And so when you're doing a wing, you always want the outside of the feather, or the outside, uh, the portion of the slip um, that you've cut uh, that was towards the outside to be towards the outside of the wing, because that's always going to look the nicest. Um, and that's a little bit more difficult in mixed wings when you're doing just slips, because uh, as you tie them in, they can get rotated um, or they can get bunched in, in an awkward way. Um, but if you make sure that they all are, you know, curving in the right direction, then um, it'll always look nice. So, next, horns. It smells like somebody's grilling. It's nice weather right now. Um, horns are blue and gold macaw. Um, And like I said, this is a super simple wing, so this is actually the last last thing to go on. on the horns. Uh, but again, I'm going to, uh, as I mentioned uh, when I started this on Thursday, I'm actually going to give this a... Uh, a pearl, black pearl head, because why not? Again, it's one of those situations where the recipe just calls for it to have a head that is black. So that means you could be a black curl head. It could be a curl black um, wool head that you dub on, or it could be uh, just a black lacquer head. Uh, all of the above are valid. Just trying to trim. All right, got my hurl, nicely dyed. Going to wax my thread before tying it in, and we want the wax will help hold the hurl in, or hold the tag end of the hurl as you wrap it so we don't pull it out. Because we're, you don't get a whole lot of, um, not a whole lot of uh, extra hurl, you know, stem to turn it in. To grab our Hackle pliers. Um, just gonna wrap a nice pearl hood. Uh, 
always brushing the hurls, the fibers, the um, hurl parts towards the rear. Again, not not really folding the hurl, but. It's just got a little bit of a bumpiness to it. I want to solve with a little thread. Yeah, bumpiness is just making it a little bit difficult to wrap the thread smoothly and the hurl smoothly. So. We don't want any of the hurls to be pointing towards the front if we can help it. Because that just doesn't look very neat. good. A couple wraps of thread, which I think is still waxed. Trim it off. Some more thread just to bind down the fuzzies. Uh, yeah, if you if you find that you have a ton of like, um, you know, fuzzies from you know, the the butt ends of wings or, or hurl, um, just wax your thread. Uh, and that extra wax, that that tackiness from the wax, will uh, help. Uh, Bind those down, keep them from getting, from messing up your uh, head. To finish. That. It's the baker. All right, so this is the first one finished of the nursery rhyme trio. The Three men in a tub. Uh, now what we can do is we can take our bodkin, or, or just kind of run it through the wing. Not going to hurt anything. Um, can't hurt the underwing because it's all one feather. Just going to run it through the wing. Separate out some of the wing components. There you go. You have a very, very nice, easy, straightforward uh, wing. Get a coat of head cement on that. Just uh, again, always for uh, kind of these um, vintage style flies. If I'm not tying a very modern style fly, then definitely like to use Kelson's head cement. You know, and because this has a hurl head, all I need is just a thin band of head cement around the base. It's mostly just to hold it all together. You know, should the should the whip finish ever fail, 
I mean, I doubt it will, but there's there's plenty of there's plenty of wax in this whip finish. But you know, if it ever does, um, then the you know the head cement's there to just kind of glue it down in place and keep it. So that's the that's the baker. Um, and we've got plenty of time. It's only don't end it there because it's a bit of a short stream. So um, we will finish the baker or the the butcher rather. So we'll have the butcher and the baker finished, and all we'll have to do is the candlestick maker. Uh, and the can, uh, the butcher is a little bit unusual in that it's an asymmetrical underwing. And essentially what it is is it's a tippet and a golden pheasant rump feather back to back. Um, might not use this particular tippet because this is a very nice large one. Um, I don't know if I want to use this such a short one either. But essentially, I think I'm going to put the tippet towards the front and then the... Now, I have seen this done in which both feathers are facing towards the, the front of the fly, or in my case, towards me, uh, towards the tire. Um, I don't happen to like that because I think it can cause the wing to be kind of wonky because the forces are all pointing in different directions or well they're all pointing in one direction so they're not balancing each other um and that i think isn't always optimal for the wing uh let me just double check and see what's in the wing like i said i'm, I'm using got an online list of recipes that i have up uh, while i'm streaming so i don't forget stuff because i have forgotten stuff in the past um Uh, let me just, let me put away some feathers that I don't need right at the minute. And, uh, yellow and blue. We'll also do this one as a bundle style mix wing because I want the style of these flies to match. Now the candlestick maker, um, for those of you who are familiar with the pattern is vast, is, is very different in its wing construction from the butcher and the baker. Um, it's a whole feather wing with uh, 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 jungle hawk, couple jungle hawk eyes and toppings. So it's not a mixed wing. It's, it doesn't even, it doesn't use any strips. Um, so we'll tie that one differently. But this one, we're gonna put the wing on just like we did with the uh, baker. So, like I said, I, um, um, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use... Uh, I, I'm just trying to be a little bit cautious about using materials um, and conserving materials. So I am, I'm going to pick a, a more appropriately sized feather. That one was rather large and, you know, large feathers like that are good for, you know, pick, pulling off um, you know, strips for, for underwings that are, are made of composed of strips. And, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to conserve some of my larger, larger, uh, tippets. All right, so that one looks pretty good. It's a good length. Just going to flatten, 
flatten the stem as usual. Um, now, because one one of the components is tippet and the other one is a rump feather, they're not the forces aren't going to balance terribly well. Um, the rump feather is just a much softer feather. Uh, but if we were to tie both the rump feather and the tippet feather on the same side of the hook, then the forces wouldn't balance at all, and you'd end up with a wing with a very distinct curve to it. And uh, not about that. So, tight is on. I'm going to tie the rump feather on just a little bit long, a little bit longer than the tippet, so that it sticks out the other side and is visible. Um, kind of on the principle that there's no sense in tying it in unless you can see it. So I just want it to be a little bit visible past the tippet. Um, so, you know, you look at it and like, oh, there's another feather back there. Again, I'm going to trim it, and let's see, I seem to have lost a lot of wax. It's not good, because I'll find it in my laundry. Oh, here. Again, like always, wax or thread. Now, again, you guys are looking at it from the opposite side, so the side that I'm not, uh, or the side that I've des designated as the front is the side towards me, um, and that's the side that'll be displayed when it goes into a frame. But I'm going to wax my thread, bind down the tag ends, create a smooth base for the wing itself. All right, so the wing has, just pick up, yeah, keep the, keep the mess at bay. So this wing has, um, Strips of brown mallard, bustard, peacock wing, wood duck, blue and yellow strips of swan. So I have blue and yellow turkey. Uh, how am I going to build this? I think um, I'm going to grab some mallards and duck. So most commonly, I guess, I have seen the butcher tied with the wood duck as sides and the mallard as roof. And that's probably, that's a very modern interpretation. Um, I'm guessing just by the language you know, used in the recipe that these likely would have been mixed in to the wing along with everything else. But I do like the idea of the, of the wood duck being a part of the sides um, just because it's such a striking feather, um, and uh, I think it looks good in the sides. What I am going to do is I'm going to mix the mallard into the wing, however. Uh, so just need to find some mallard. Uh, but I am going to put the mallard on the, as like the top strip of the wing instead of in the like in the middle so i know it's listed first but um i kind of want the mallard to be 
like a like a veiling like veiling the wing almost. I guess that's kind of the best way to describe it. So. Uh, and the other thing we could do is we could tie tie everything else in and then tie the mallard in last on top and then mix the wing uh, which would help preserve the mallard as kind of the, the last or the, the ultimate the, the top color flashy color that you see uh, that is an option so there are a number of ways to do this. Um, to be honest, there's not a whole lot of wrong ways to do it. I think one of the, the few wrong ways I would say is if you tied the slips backwards and you had the dull side out, um, that's probably the only wrong way to do this. Um, it's just a matter of preference and how you envision this thing looking. Uh, I, I will say that there are probably some purists out there who say, oh, mixed wings, if you're going to try to emulate a certain style or if you're tying out a certain person's book, you should be emulating their style of mixed wing because you know each author kind of had set out its own way, his or her own way of, of mixing a wing. Some of them like to do the bundle. Some of them would stack them up. Some of them would do a bundle but then tie it night, neatly or they would take you know the, the underwing um, the tip it from an underwing, they'd stack up all the wing components on it, and then they'd tie it with a nice little piece of thread as like a bundle. Um, so you could do that. Um, personally, I'm more of a results guy, so if it looks good, then it doesn't really matter how you got there. Um, I'm mostly looking for a method which will produce, consistently produce good looking results. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bundle up. Or I'm going to do the bundle, the untied bundle uh, version uh, using the peacock uh, swan, or in this case, turkey and bustard. And I'm going to tie the mallard in on top, kind of as a roof, but then I'm going to mix it in once it's on the fly. Um... Uh, once it's on the fly, I'll mix it into the wing, and then I'll tie the uh, wood duck in as like a side. Maybe break it up a little bit so it, it kind of fits in with the, the rest of the wing. But not going to make this too complicated and we're going to do try and make it so that the mallard at least stands out as its own components. Um, in this case, uh, to achieve a, a, a reasonably dense wing with this, um, this level of material, I'm going to do four fibers of each component. And essentially my stack, um, just thinking about how how each of these things are, is gonna stack in terms of length and height. I'm gonna stack the uh, peacock in at the bottom because it's the shortest. We're gonna do a stacked version and I'm going to extend First, the blue, then the yellow. And th those are both going to be the, the same length, and they're going to be about a half inch longer. Than the peacock. It came off longer, longer fiber, so. So here's what we got so far, right? So we have the peacock, which is pretty short. Pretty short fibers just because of the came off a wing. Then we have blue and yellow, which are extended beyond that. And then uh, on top of that will be the bustard, which is the same length as the two colored components. We'll just tie that in as a bundle. OK, 
check. So that's one side. Then we'll do the other side, and then we'll tie on the mallard. Mix the wing, then tie on the wood duck. Maybe mix the wing again. Sorry, I keep forgetting I dropped my luster. <laughs> so I'm going to stack up this wing. And because I, I'm going to stack this wing as if it goes in the direction it goes on, so I'm going to stack it in the opposite order, so buster it on top. Makes me think I have five. So bustered. Yellow, blue, peacock, a little bit short. So there. And step them up. Get the length. So, I don't know if the peacock rolled under the wing. <laughs> oh dear. How's that look? That looks pretty wild. Pretty messy. Perfect. <laughs> so again, we'll trim the wing up in segments so it doesn't shift around too much. Wax our thread. Feel like this peacock got twisted. Let me actually get the case. I'm actually going to pull the peacock out here and tie it in by itself in the right orientation because, yes, it did get in fact twisted. I want, like I said, I want everything to be balanced. Even though this is a mixed wing, it still has to balance itself. Uh, and so if you have some fibers that are tied, uh, inside out, as it were, um, they'll curve in the wrong direction, and they then the wing won't balance or be balanced, and it'll look funky. So anyway, 
tie that in, wiggle it so that everything's on top of the hook. So that's important. Then we're going to tie in strips, individual strips of um, bronze mallard. We're going to use fairly broad strips. Uh, I probably should reverse my thread to tie these in, but hey, moving dangerous. If we soft loop them, we can just. So I want them to sit up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Now, like, I, like I've said in the past streams, if you're having trouble tying in a soft material such as, you know, any duck or goose, um, a soft, uh, like a slip of, um, of uh, golden pheasant tippet, if you're having trouble getting it to tie in because it's not, because it's, you know, rotating funny or it's not sitting properly, Tie in one side, so tie in the side closest to you, reverse your thread, tie in the side away from you. Uh, reversing your thread helps by having the forces that are used to tie in the slip going in the same direction. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that shortly with the wood duck. Let me just wax my thread, bind down. Bind down the mallard, so it doesn't come out. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bodkin, clean it off. Going to mix all of this together. Mallard, turkey, buster, peacock, and all. Right here on the fly. No pun intended. And make sure everything is up on top of the hook. Next, I'm going to tie in the wood duck sides, or wood duck S sides. Just tie. Okay. Now, I don't know what I was thinking when I was tying this fly originally. Like I said, I've had this fly sitting on my bench a little bit, but the... Um, this thing has a massive head. It's going to have a massive head. So, one wood duck side. Other side. Now to tie this one in, uh, I'm going to, as I described, I'm going to reverse my thread. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to fully tie in this side, wind my thread to the front, slide the thread under between the blind eye of the hook and the um, gut. And I'm going to bring it back to where I want to tie in. Now the thread's reversed, so I have to remember to wind it towards me. 
because I'm winding it towards me, the forces that the threat exerts on this slip of wood duck are exactly the same as the forces on the other side. So they should lie flat and equally. From that, back to my thread, wind it back to the front. Go back to my normal orientation for the end of the fly, which right now just consists of a hurl head. Cool. So that's that. Um, I wish I could get this uh, golden pheasant. There we go. The body feather, the, the rump feather, is a little bit broader. It spreads out a little bit more than the tippet, so it didn't quite want to stay. But, um, great. So, pick a hurl for the head. thread. Just want to make sure that, again, because the hurls have an upside and a downside, I just want to make sure that it's tied correctly. And again, for some reason, when I was tying this originally a long time ago, I left plenty of room at the head, so we can wind quite a whirl head here. What you doing? Pull the hurl, the fuzz, the fibers back so that they don't get trapped under the stem going forward because that doesn't look nice. And I'm going to wind full hurl head. Mm -hmm. right, a little bit of an extra head, but finish this off. Take it out. We're going to add our cement, head cement. Yeah, if these flies didn't have a hurl head, I'd probably spend a decent amount of time and probably give it, you know, three or four coats of head cement just to build it up a little bit and make a nice smooth head. But because these have a hurl, hurl head, I'm not terribly concerned about that. Um, because the actual lacquered bit of the head is such a minor, minor part of it. So. Let's 
smooth. So there we go. That is the butcher. So we have the butcher. We have the butcher. We have the baker. Um, next week we'll start in on the candlestick maker. And uh, all three of these flies will be destined for a, a fairly large flame, uh, which um, will likely. So I have, a, I have a large number of frames that I show, at, that I put up at shows, uh, mostly just for you know, display purposes. Um, you, you know, I, the, the frames that I have the flies in right now are kind of like budget frames that I'm not too concerned about if they get jostled around um, while I'm you know, transporting them to shows. Uh, they all the flies are matted, so it would be a really simple thing to purchase like a custom fly and swap swap them into a, a, a nicer frame. Um, but you know, I'm always taking these frames to shows, so it's not always uh, you know it's not always a smooth ride there. And, and then of course, when you're at the show, they get jostled around because people pick them up, put them down. Um, they get bumped into things. So I've got them in some uh, sacrificial budget frames. Um, but these flies, I think the the uh, three men in a tub trio will, uh, will go in a nice frame together and then probably go up on my Etsy shop sometime um, whenever they're finished. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks for hanging out. Like I said, next week we'll work on the candlestick maker a little bit. Uh, totally different fly from the butcher and the baker. Um, yeah. If you want to see more of my work, head on over to my Instagram, justwondering.brad. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel or if you'd like to purchase a fly, which you've seen me tie here, uh, you can head over to my Etsy shop, Studio1213. Uh, as I've said, all of the money from sales at the Etsy shop go towards improving the stream, uh, buying new technology uh, technologies. Um, I've got the new mic right here uh, for you know, talking to you guys. Um, my next goal is to upgrade my computer uh, so that I can start editing videos have a little bit uh, nicer, neater, tighter videos uh, on like how to's um, so that you all can get a, a nice closer view. Um, so yeah, that, that's where I'm headed with the channel. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I had a pretty nice spring break uh, last week. Next week we'll be back on our weekend only stream um, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, I, I, I'm not entirely certain. But, uh, um, yeah, thanks for hanging out and, uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. Hope everybody's staying safe, staying healthy. Um, I'll offer it again. I, uh, if you want to ask me questions about the ongoing pandemic, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'll answer them on stream. Uh, I'm a microbiologist. I have my PhD in bacteriology, so I'm not a virus expert, caveat, but, um, you know, feel free to ask me questions about the ongoing pandemic. Um, I am also in school right now for my master's of public health and epidemiology. So, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what's happening. Um, and I have some predictions and I have some pretty strong opinions on what's going on. So feel free to ask me questions, uh, anything you want to know. I'll try to answer it. And if I don't know the answer, I know where to find all the resources. So again, thanks for hanging out. Have a good week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, I'll see you next time.